don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's the 3rd of December, the first Saturday, which means it's time for a brand new mission inspiration at Challenge over on our Facebook group. So let me switch over to my overhead camera over there and I'll show you the prompt that was pulled out of the box. Well, it was the last one that was pulled out of the box, to be honest, seeing as this is the last main mission for 2022. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm going to create based on the prompt for the month. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So the prompt that was pulled out from the box, oh, well, actually, it was the last one. As you can see, <laughs> there's nothing left now. All the previous ones are in the back. So this was the last one to come out. And it is a song in your heart. So draw or paint a heart shape and fill it with the lyrics of your favorite song. Okay, so suggested color scheme, obviously with it being a heart, you've got to have reds and pinks, um, but then there's a gray. So um, it could be kind of lavender, it could be one of those heather kind of purpley, kind of greys if you wanted to have like kind of like a warmer palette. Um, so I've found a page, one of the last few, I know I keep saying this, but it's the last few remaining pages in my Dina Wakely multi-surface journal. And I've just covered up this old art journal page here because um, I want to be working on this side. And I've also grabbed a sheet of music paper uh, and I've just quickly sort of just drawn the outline of a heart because that's pretty much where I want to go with this. Um, so and I've folded it down the middle and I'm happy with the shape on this side. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the heart shape out and it doesn't matter um, whether you're not very good at drawing these kind of shapes or if you've got a huge kind of die or something like that. You can do whatever kind of heart shape you want to do. Freehand, um, primitive style, you know, folk style, whatever you like. Whatever floats your boat, as they say. There we go. So I've got my big kind of heart shape there, which is just the right kind of size for my art journal page. So I'm going to put that to one side because I don't want to work on that straight away. I want to work on my background first. So thinking of the colours that were there, so I've got some pink, oh, I've got some reds, sorry. So I've got uh, my Deco Art Americana, so that's cherry red. There we go. Um, I've got an indigo blue paint, brand new, it's never been opened, still sealed look. And this is a red hot chili. So two different kind of red tones but I've also got a pot of white gesso, um, which I can use to tone down and create pinks. So we've got that. Um, but what do we do in the background? Well, I always find that the best colors that work well with a red foreground are kind of greens and yellows. Um, as you can see here, you've got greens and kind of yellow tones, but there are pops of red in here that just kind of yeah it balances I don't know why it's just one of those things um, so that's what I'm going to try and do I'm going to create just a, a kind of bog standard if you like um, mix media so I'm just trying to look for my I put some stencils down some of there they are they're up there, look, what have we got? So I've got three different stencils here. Um, just ones I haven't put away yet. So I'm gonna use those in the background. Um, we'll do a little bit of mark making as well, um, just because. So let's try and create a background on this page here. So, first of all then, let's get some, um, some green colors in there. So I've got olive green there, and I've also got pistachio mist. So two different kind of green tones. Again, I'm just going to give them a bit of a, a bit of a shake up. And I've also got um, some light buttermilk, which is an off-white. So it's kind of like creamy, creamy. So let's start with, um, yeah, let's start with this pistachio mist. So I'm not putting any gesso down on the page. 
Not yet. Right, let's grab some mark making tools and a palette knife. So let's let's just start scraping paint. So we're going to build up the background. Okay. So while that's still wet, let me also grab anything will do. So anything that's got a straight edge to it. Um, there's a compass there, card from San Diego. <laughs> Excellent stuff. A um, couple of hotel key cards, an old bank card, and a little bit of a, a protractor. That'll do as well. So for now. So let's bring in that darker colour. Now I'm not drying it just yet, but because it's kind of warm here, I've got the heating on because it's very cold outside today, with it being December already. And you can get some great kind of distressed kind of effects, not by using a paintbrush, just by scraping you paint onto the page. And like I said, I've not gessoed and I'm not drying in between layers. I'm not even going to clean my palette. Buttermilk. Okay. So let's do a dribble there, a dribble there, just a quick dribble there. So you get this great kind of distressed kind of rust, well I say rusty texture. It's not really rusty but it's kind of like a, a corroded texture. Okay so now we've got those kind of greens out I want to bring in just some kind of warmer kind of blue colours. So teal mint I've got trying not to get any of the dried bits. So we'll put a small blob there, small blob over here, and another one over here. Now I am conscious as well that when we add the heart on this page, a lot of this colour will kind of disappear because our heart shape is going to go in the middle somewhere. So it'd be nice just so we can see this kind of colour I'm poking from behind. So let's just grab and place that. Yeah, I think we can just add a little bit more. It's a real nice kind of greeny blue. Must admit, it is one of my favourites. Go to colours, if you like. Teals and turquoises. Just a little bit. So let's just audition that heart again. Yes, that's it. Okay, and we're going to come back in again with that buttermilk. This time to put another small blob just to break up those little bits of colour, but again, like I said, only a very small amount. Now, let's grab that protractor this time. Okay, so that's kind of smushed that a little bit more than I wanted especially down here. So I'm just going to add another drop back in, real small. Grab the palette. There we go. That just kind of breaks it back up again. 
Okay, so I'm liking that kind of texture there I've got. So before I go any further, I just want to break it up even more just by adding some white into that mix. So let's just grab the white gesso. Okay, um, and I'll just dip in a brush. I'm just thinking I've got a small brush. Yes, I've got a small brush. That'll do. Okay, and some water. I know you can't see it because I've done, I've done white on white. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's pretty much kind of mixed. Now I've got a, I've got a nice kind of fluid white now. So just enough to break up that background even further. Now sometimes I do this at the end. Sometimes I do it at the beginning. Depends what I'm trying to create. If I'm trying to create a nice kind of broken up background, this is the way to do it. Okay. I'm liking that, but I still want to do a little bit more. So let's just grab, um, I've got a lid. I've still got some of that white paint left on the paper. So I'm just gonna add some more marks. into that background. And yes, the paint is still wet. So that blue is still kind of wet. I am conscious to myself where the heart's going to go. So you can still see we've got bits there. Okay, so I'm happy with that background the way it stands. So I'm going to dry it off and then I'll be right back. That background is now dry. So I want to add a little bit of stenciling. So I'm going to come back in with that white. And then I've got a little sponge and I'm going to grab my, this is the bamboozle stencil. So I think this is going to be perfect. I'm going to pick up some of that white gesso and I'm going to try and kind of break in the white from the top. So that kind of breaks in from there. And then I'll do a little bit down the side here. And then go lightly towards the middle so it just diffuses out. Like so. And then we'll do a little bit more over here. Down at the bottom. I'm only doing a little bit of stencil, I'm not going mad. And usually when I say that I end up going mad. But I will try and use a little bit of restraint today. There we go. Okay. Happy with that. So we'll get that one dried off as well. That background is now dry. So I'm going to just move it to one side for the time being. Just drop it on the floor next to me. And I'm going to bring that heart back in. Okay, so this red hot chili paint from Indigo Blue is translucent, which basically means that there's not a lot of chalk um, in the paint to make it opaque. So if you've got matte and chalky paint, then they will cover what's underneath. Translucent paints um, don't have that chalk base in them. So when you paint over the top of other things, you see what's underneath. 
So they're perfect for layering colours, um, particularly if you like to get that kind of colour mix. So just like when you're mixing colours ordinarily, um, if you put a blue down and then a yellow down and they overlap, wherever they overlap it will turn green, but you'll still be able to see what's underneath. So I've got um, music under here. I don't want to lose that completely, but then again I don't want it to be completely in my face either. So what I intend to do is I'm going to put just a thin layer of gesso over the top of this paper heart and then I'm going to add the bright paint over the top. So and what that will do, it will give me that base then to be able to write my song lyrics over the top. So let's grab some gesso. So this will knock back the music and the words of the song. You'll still be able to see them in the background, but they'll be a lot more faded into the background. thinking about it, it probably would have been a better idea if I'd have done it on the page um, before cutting the shape out, but hey-ho. <laughs> I got carried away. So if I'd have done the music page first, painted it all, and then cut the heart out, it probably would have been better. Less fiddly anyway. But possibly if you're watching this, maybe not as aesthetically nice. But then again, you'd have probably had to sit and watch me cut it out again anyway, so. So as it's drying, I can still see the lyrics and the music underneath. It might be kind of difficult to see that with the light reflecting off the white. You may have to just take my word for it. <laughs> Until it dries, of course, because then when it stops being, stops being reflected, you'll see it more. Okay. Obviously dried out a bit. So I've still got some of the gesso on the paintbrush, which is fine. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that paint. And you can immediately see that it's not covering with that like a hundred percent opacity. You can still see the music underneath. I'm hoping that the camera is picking that up. I think it's probably because, yeah, again, it's probably because it's wet that it's reflecting. And of course, you could make it go even further just by adding a tad of water to it. And that will thin the paint down even more. But these particular paints from Indigo Blue are kind of very pigment rich anyway, so they don't tend to dilute the colour down much. They'll dilute the coverage, but not necessarily the cover, the actual colour. And I don't mind, again, if you can see brush strokes, it just adds just a little bit more of that kind of painterly feel to the page. There we go. That'll do nicely. Okay, somebody's trying to send me a text. Oh, it's Ian. <laughs> Ian's away this weekend. 
uh, is down on the um, on the south coast, Weymouth, today doing the, one of the last steampunk shows of the year, and he's just sent me a text. Um, he's just done a, a rather large sale, so he's rather happy. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> right, let's get this dried off. So the heart's now dry and you can still see, I don't know whether or not the camera's picking, it's probably better if I tilt it that way. Sometimes having good lights can be a bit of a detriment when you're trying to film because <laughs> it does tend to wash things out a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the music still in the background there. But I just want to add a little bit of darkness to that. Um, so I'm going to bring in that darker red colour, so that's the cherry red. Now this is... Um, more of an opaque colour. So I'm going to just bring in a different stencil this time. This is a, a bubble wrappy kind of stencil. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to add a little bit of kind of darkness with that stencil in just around the bottom there. I'm using the same sponge as well. Just load the sponge up. just kind of gives it a bit of a pop art 3D kind of feel. Because we've mixed it in with that white gesso that was already on there, if I just rub gently, I can get a nice fairly sort of gradiency feel and I can just lift it up and have a look yeah I'm happy with that me likey okay so clean up dry up back in two minutes okay we're all dry now so we're going to prepare the heart for having um, the writing put on it the song lyrics that I want to put in there um, I've got my Dilusions um, journaling block, which is useful if you want to write things onto an art journal page. You can just trace a line or just do the writing following the line of this curve. Um, one of the things which I really like about this is the fact that it does give you a curve to write on and it's, it kind of breaks up any boring writing that you have on an art journal page. But one drawback with this is that it's stuck with that kind of shape. You can either do it just like that or you can do it just like that. So I've been thinking to myself, I may design a set of lines on an acrylic sheet like this, um, but a set where there are different line patterns that you can trace out with a pencil. So just be able to pop, like a template, you can pop your pencil in, just draw the line, and then you can go and follow that line for writing. And I can probably squeeze maybe um, if I do one on the outside, two on the outside, so one on that side, one on that side, and maybe four in the middle, you'll get six different line variations to be able to write um, art journaling on. But that was a, something that I thought that I might look at in the new year. So, right, so pencil. So if I just draw a pencil mark like that, and then I can move it down move it over slightly and then again move it back and then the last one let's do it go in the opposite direction there and of course we can um, erase those later. So I've got some stencil tape, so this is just going to help hold it down, providing that my desk isn't wet or damp. Stencil tape is kind of like low tack, um, a bit like what you use when you're painting, like painter's tape, but even lower tack than that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to write out very faintly in pencil 
the words of the song that I've chosen to go into my art journal. Now for this I'm using um, some song, ly song lyrics by Adele. Um, it's from the song called Rolling in the Deep and which is one of my favourites um, and there's just one quick kind of like chorus line or a couple of lines within one of the choruses which I think is going to be perfect for this. It says um, you had my heart inside of your hands and you played it to the beat which I like. So it could be the beat of the song or beat of the heart. I like that. So that's what I'm going to try and write on this. I've just got to be careful. I don't want to just write it and then run out of space. So if I do it kind of faintly Obviously I'm using my own handwriting. And I can fill the line. making the writing bigger or smaller depending on the space. There we go. I'm liking that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a white pen. Now hopefully I've got some white pens that actually work because notoriously white pens when you want them to work never do. So we have to maybe use a variety of different types of white pen. Um, let's have a look. I'm just looking in my collection to see what I've got. Right. So I've got a um, Uniball, a Sigma Uniball, which they're usually a good bet, um, but I've had these for quite some time, so I don't know whether how much is left in that one. I've got this other one, which is Japanese, probably Sakura. Um, but again, it, this is rather a, a fine point one, so I don't know whether that's going to be good enough. And then we've got some thicker. Um, this is a white Posca pen uh, bullet, and it's, ugh, but it's a fairly decent one. But again, prone to flooding, so that might be okay. And then the last one I've got is a Pebio, um, or Pebio, an acrylic marker in white, again. Possibly prone to flooding, but I think once you actually get the line going, it should be okay. Um, I think I'm going to go first of all with the Sigma because I can always go with Sigma, I, I can always go back over it again just to thicken the lines up once I've got that basic line down. So, but again, you see, I don't know whether this is actually going to work. Yeah, you see, I can't even get that to work. So that's probably going to go in the bin. Um, I really need to replenish my white pens. I'll just have a quick look just through my set, my collection here. I've got another one. 
Oh, right, maybe that's going to work. <sighs> Frustrating. <laughs> right, let's grab a, a ruler, a, a rubber as well. Okay. This rubber of mine is quite hard, so occasionally I've just got to clean it. It's it dirty. The best way to clean it is just with an emery board, and that removes any um, graphite buildup. Right, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. Let's try the Posca. We're getting there. So this is going to be a bit of a slow process. I don't want to get any rubber bits. We've got a brush. I'll just brush that out of the way with. There we go. So let's just go a bit further on. Right, so I'll go onto a bit of fast forward. Okay, so I've just dried that off, um, and I can see that while I was writing up here, when I first began, the paints hadn't really mixed properly in the pen. So this beginning part here is not quite as white as the rest of it. So I'm going to take my chances, and I'm going to go over it again, because that's the nature. Of these pens. I'm just being sort of careful. But I think 
that I reckon that that's probably, once I've done the word heart, I think that's brought the rest of it back. Yeah, I think so. Right, so I can put that away. Okay, just give that a quick dry off again. Okay, so here's a cautionary tale. So after I'd finished um, drying off the paint, I kind of tried to remove some more of the pencil lines that I'd drawn um, to get that wavy kind of line. And I ended up um, erasing some of the white paint um, because, you know, I'm rubbing it away. Um, so I went back over again with the white Posca pen and I ended up flooding the O. So sometimes it's best just to leave well alone. Know when to step away. <laughs> Obviously something I've not learnt myself yet. So, right. There you go. So bring back my art journal page. And now I can stick and glue that down because I'm fairly happy with that. So let's just turn it over. Get the glue moving. There we go, that's better. And I'm just sticking it down with a spirit glue because I don't particularly want it to buckle too much. I don't necessarily think it would with all that paint that's on there. But, you know, I don't want to take the chance. Okay, so let's flip that over. I think that's pretty much halfway onto the page. Okay, so, and of course, as previously, I'm not going to leave well enough alone because I now have my Stabilo All Pencil. So what I want to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just around the outside. just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. And I know some of you will say, oh, I preferred it beforehand. Well, yeah, you know, we can stop at any stage, really. It's just deciding when is right for you. And I would feel better if I just activated this with a small brush, let's see what we got. Da, 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 da. That one, probably about that size. It's a number five. And some water. But not a huge amount of water. Now the Stabilo All Pencils are water-based. So the more water that you add to them, the more they'll reactivate. So even if you feel as though that your colour, that the black outline has popped too much, just add another little bit of water to it and then you can diffuse it out. Don't need messes. So if I just add a little bit of water to this one, you can see it's quite dark. Add a bit more water to it, you'll see it just starts to soften and diffuse. Almost to the point where it vanishes.
See what I mean? Just kind of diffuses and disappears. Move my phone out of the way. I used it for writing down the lyrics. <coughs> okay, so it's darker over this side because that's the edge of the paper and it's soaked straight into the fibres because there was no gesso, no paint or anything. There we go. Kind of makes it pop away from that page now. So of course the other thing that I want to do, just to finish it off, is just to add a few splatters. So, let's to be low all onto my mat. Just to activate it with the water. So we've now got a nice fluid but light bit of splattering. And you can go big or small. But this will diffuse and dry quite light, so it'll be a subtle splatter. Okay, so that's all dried off now. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, is that enough? And I think it's missing something. So I'm just going to grab a black pen. So this one is a another Signo. A Signo Uniball, so gel grip. Um, there's no sizing or anything, it just, oh, there is, look, it says 0 0.7, there we are. So using the same dilutions guide, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add a little bit of, just a kind of wavy border. just to kind of finish that off. I just feel it needs something towards those edges. So now that I've got that, I can just go back a little bit of a little bit of a framey border And also, actually, it looks a little bit like one of those heart monitor things, doesn't it? Is it a cardiogram? <laughs> so I'm going to put there where the lyrics have come from. So we're starting to build up some darkness in that background which is playing off against the the dark border around the heart so you've got that kind of balance now of something in the background and in the foreground so i think i'm happy with that i'm happy with the way that's turned out and i think just to finish off i'm just going to sign it in there and put today's day which is the 3rd of december 2022 and i think i'm happy with that page so we have a song in my heart. So I draw a paint a heart shape and fill it with the lyrics of your favourite song. And I've used reds and pinks in there. Um, I've not used the full gamut, but there you go, you don't really have to. So I think my mission is complete. So I hope you enjoyed watching me create my art journal page for December's mission inspiration. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, 
you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, that's the URL on the screen there for our Mission Inspiration Facebook group, but there will be a clickable link in the description area below this video. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget to check out your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. Thank you.